Today we're off to the lovely green land of Ireland, one of my favourite countries, as we continue the Funeral Culture Around the World series. Before we begin, we post death and dying related videos every Friday, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's talk Irish Funeral Culture. Ok, so let's start with the basics. The Republic of Ireland is a European country with just over 2 million people. Importantly for this video, it is 70% Catholic. And as Irish comedian Dara O'Brien summed it up nicely, if you are Irish and you were raised Catholic and you no longer believe, you are still Catholic. Meaning that if you're not religiously Catholic, you are still culturally Catholic. And you'll see what I mean as this video goes on. Now, I'm not going to go into the history of the country, but for a variety of reasons, it is still politically and socially more conservative than its UK neighbour. And yes, Ireland and the UK are two separate countries with very different culture, language and history, which usually had Ireland coming out much worse, suffering from famine, poverty and colonisation. So don't mix the two up. Alright, onwards. Funerals. Ireland is a country with a history of rich customs for honouring and mourning their dead. To quote Ian Kilroy in his article The Irish Way of Life with Death, the bold fact of the matter is Irish people love nothing better than a good funeral. The funeral has always been a central social ritual in Irish society, outranking even marriage and baptism as a community rite. But funerals in Ireland have changed significantly from what they once were even a decade ago. The push of the funeral industry has taken away much of the unique rituals and superstition, though in more rural areas these still apply. So while in places like Dublin or Galway things might be a bit more run of the mill, let's take a look at the more isolated areas of Ireland and see how they do things a bit more traditionally. And it all begins with the Irish wake, the most prominent and well known part of Irish funeral culture where the deceased is laid out in their coffin to be viewed in their finest attire. The feel and tone of an Irish wake can be both heartrendingly mournful and joyously commemorative, sometimes simultaneously. It is not just an opportunity to grieve and process the pain of loss, but also to celebrate and honour the gift of life. This is why alcohol and music, both significant staples of Irish culture, are often heavily featured at a wake. This unique mixture of melancholy and mirth is partly why Irish wake are so famous the world over. Such an atmosphere is especially likely if the deceased was elderly or ill for a long period of time. A wake is usually held in the home of the deceased or the home of a close relative. A death notice is put out and will normally state reposing at and then give the address of the wake. The location of the wake is usually pretty evident by the large amount of cars parked outside, as well as these groups of people will often gather outside the home to chat and converse. Typically the body is waked for one to three nights, during which time family, neighbours, friends, work colleagues, even vast acquaintances visit the house to pay their respects. Children are usually in attendance and death is not a topic that is hidden from Irish children. It is typical upon arrival to take a moment to stand and look at the body, during which time you may say a prayer. Some people touch the hands or the head of the corpse for a few seconds or sprinkle some holy water, which is often nearby, on the body. Once you have met with the family, shaken hands and viewed the body, it is customary to take a seat and chat with others who are present. Expect to be offered a cup of tea or coffee or a nip of whiskey. An acceptable time to remain at a wake like this is anything between 10 minutes and several hours, depending on how well you know the family. Close neighbours and friends often volunteer to help in the kitchen, making and serving tea and sandwiches, or undertake other chores such as minding the children or running errands. It is usual for all the curtains in the wake house to be drawn, but for one curtain to be left open in the room where the deceased is lying. Mirrors in the house, especially those in the room where the deceased body is lying, may be covered or turned to the wall. Often the clocks are stopped at the time of death. Candles are lit and placed near the deceased, and rosary beads will be wrapped around the hands of the deceased. Traditionally, the deceased is never left alone during a wake, and they're watched over so that the departed soul is kept company and the evil spirits don't interfere. Once the wake has concluded, it is time for the mass, meaning the funeral service that will take place at the local church. It is usual for the coffin to be removed from the wake house feet first so the deceased can't find their way back home, and is often carried, at least in part of the way, on the shoulders of pole bearers to the church. The mass is usually a full Catholic service lasting around an hour before the same pole bearers carry the coffin to the burial place. Every village has a graveyard, and having been there, I can say with great certainty, 
every village has a graveyard. People living in smaller villages or communities, of which there are many, are often still buried in these graveyards. However, in cities and larger towns, large cemeteries are used. These often have family burial plots where they are buried together. And burial is still the most common form of body disposal in Ireland. Cremation is very slowly becoming more popular, but is still definitely in the minority. To give you a comparison, in Ireland, only 20% of people choose cremation, while their neighbours in the UK is close to 80%. Glasnevin Cemetery. Now, I was in Ireland last year and I got to tick this one off my cemetery bucket list and I was thrilled. So, Glasnevin Cemetery, and I apologies for the pronunciation problem there, is Ireland's national cemetery and the largest in the country and it's located just outside Dublin, Ireland's capital. Since 1832, more than 1.5 million people have been buried in this garden cemetery, which covers over 124 acres. You will find the largest collection of Celtic crosses in the world here. It has an interactive visitor centre with award-winning exhibits including the City of the Dead and numerous photographs from the cemetery's history. You can also search for your family's surname in the computer database to possibly learn more about your ancestors. There is also a great gift shop and cafe, of which was packed when I was there with so many people enjoying a coffee and a site. So a few interesting facts about this place. There are nearly 800,000 people who have been buried in Glasnevin Cemetery and unmarked mass graves due to the death toll of the Great Famine in the 1840s and the later cholera epidemic. There is also a mass grave where hundreds of fallen women were reburied, having been found buried in a mass grave at the site of a Magdalene Laundry institutions that used to house fallen women after it was sold in 1993. As Glasnevin Cemetery is consecrated ground, you might be surprised to know that it is one of the few cemeteries that allow stillborn babies to be buried on consecrated ground in an area known as the Angel's Plot. The cemetery has an area set aside for deceased clergy which is extravagant, starting with Archbishop Edward Bacay's mausoleum who died in 1885 and was buried there in 1890. A structure that impressive takes time. The Glasnevin Cemetery owes its origins to Daniel O'Connell. As part of his work to advance the rights of Catholics at the time, he established the Dublin Cemeteries Committee in 1828 to provide dignified burial space for those of all religions and none. Following his death in Italy in 1847, he was initially buried at the O'Connell Circle at the cemetery. However, a campaign had already begun to erect a more fitting memorial, and in 1855, the O'Connell Tower was completed. Later, in 1869, Daniel O'Connell's remains were reinterred in an ornate crypt at the base of the 55 metre tower. Taking time to wander around this place brings to mind a few thoughts. As much as I do think we need to start limiting our use of burial in the modern day, I strongly dispute the opinion that we should be digging up old cemeteries like this to make way for the living. Places like this are extremely valuable from so many angles culture, history, architecture, they ground people in their identity and provide an area of calm in a busy world for the living, both human and wildlife can feel a sense of peace. And when I visited, which was midweek, this place was being used thoroughly by the living. Perhaps where you are from, no one uses cemeteries for anything other than burial, but many places use them for public spaces. And they don't do so because of some fancy government campaign, but because it feels natural to them. It is not as black and white as many people seem to think. To take away a place like this is to take away just as much from the living as the dead. The traditional ways of Irish death culture are beginning to fade, as they have in many countries, as the funeral industry and our busy lives take over. But there is still so much going on, and if you have a chance to visit, it is an awesome country to experience. And a reminder that tickets are now on sale for the International Conference of the World Federation of Right to Die Societies, which is happening in Dublin in September. It is open to the public, and I hope to see you there. Now, go talk death.